This episode is brought to you by Allstate. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first, like you know to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your 20th wedding anniversary and have to spend the next 20 years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Northbrook, Illinois. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my hundredth mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at midmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. election. Now, don't worry, don't turn this off. We're not going to get all political. I do not involve myself in those type of conversations because they are lose-lose. And I also believe that everyone should be respected for whoever and however they vote. But from a selfish trading perspective, I was asked a question, should we avoid the election? Should we trade right through it, how do we handle these type of situations? Because for many traders on our platform, this is the first time they've dealt with, um, I guess, an election of this magnitude. So here are my answers. Um, but the question I got in the chat this morning was, so with the election coming up here in the US, should I not trade today? Should I not trade tomorrow? Should I take off for the next two days, right? We saw some gaps in the market last weekend and this weekend as well. Uh, what do you guys think about that? trading during elections. If it's not your election, maybe you don't even care. Um, the US election tends to be an important one because we're kind of the epicenter of everything and blah, 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 blah. But do you guys have any rules on, on trading or not trading during election periods? Does this fall into your your major news event? George says, I personally don't trade through elections. I look at them as being the same as major news. Or she says, I stay out Tuesday and Wednesday. So Tuesday being election day, Wednesday being the day after the election. So you can look at elections, U.S. elections and all elections, as being very similar to news, right? Very similar to news, right? We talk about news. What, what moves the market off of news? Is it the news event or is it the reaction? It is the reaction. And there's a very specific reaction that news events uh, react off of. And it is deviation from the expectation, right? So what does deviation from the expectation means? Meaning that the market is smart. The market will price in what it thinks is gonna happen days, weeks, months in advance, right? Smart money is smart for a reason. They are ahead of the curve most of the time, right? So. If there is a clear expectation of something and that expectation occurs as expected, you're not going to see crazy moves in the market. You'll see some moves, right? Because, you know, there's the whole general public and people are repositioning and stuff like that, especially um, in this election. Um, but you're not going to see like crazy news. Where you will see crazy news, and again, this is relevant to election and, and non-election stuff, is when there's a deviation from the expectation, when the market when something happens that the market didn't expect to happen. So looking back at two elections ago, right, where it was uh, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. And do you guys remember what the consensus was on who was going to win that election? Does anybody remember? Does anyone care? No one cares, right? Clinton, right? Hillary was supposed to win by a landslide, right? She was supposed to win by so much that she forgot to actually go to the Rust Belt and turn those votes, which ultimately ended up in her losing. She got lazy and cocky, but she was supposed to win. It wasn't even supposed to be close. Donald Trump was supposed to be a joke, and this was supposed to be the easiest victory ever. Now, remember, this was the first time I actually watched like the election um, footage stuff, like the, the live stuff of the election. And I remember like as the votes came in, it, it was I, I was. I remember because it was it was the election and it was the Chicago Cubs in the World Series, right? And if you know the Chicago Cubs, they're cursed. They haven't been in the World Series since like 
black and white TV days, right? So I was watching both on multiple screens because I have multiple monitors in my trading desk because as a computer, you know, as a trader, you know, I, I have like a million monitors um, because I'm awesome like that. So I'm watching both of these things happen at the same time and I'm watching the Cubs and it was like a, a rain delay. So like the, it was it was the final game of the series and it got delayed by like three hours. So that's why I guess that's why we switched over to the election stuff. And I remember as Hillary, as, as these states on the map were turning red, which was Trump and, and blue was Hillary. I remember they had a camera uh, on Hillary Clinton at like her her victory party and her facial expressions were priceless as as she saw it being ripped away from her and eventually Trump won. And I've never seen a reaction in the market like I saw that day. I was watching stock markets too, um, but after hours, but I've never seen a reaction in market like I saw that day because it was probably the biggest deviation from the expectation that I've ever witnessed. Um, and the markets went crazy. So that could happen if we have a deviation from the expectation. Now, in this particular election event, we're kind of going in 50-50, right? There is no consensus on like, hey, Harris is going to win or Trump is going to win. It's kind of like, Either way, Tony mentioned earlier this earlier on the chat. He said, well, whoever wins, we actually lose, right? The, the market doesn't want any of them to win, which, uh, you know, is a thing as well. But I don't think we're going to see, I, I think we will see some reaction because money is going to flood based on this and, and based on that. And historically, what happens when um, you know, Democrats are in control or Republicans are in, are in control? Uh, the, the presidential election actually isn't the main thing that matters. It's going to be like the 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 Senate and stuff like that, the people that really make the decisions. But that's a, those are the more important elections because you can't get stuff. Uh, it, a divided house isn't going to get much done. Um, where if you get similar parties all on the same side, then you you may see some follow through. But yeah, I don't see. I don't think we're going to see a massive reaction. And then if it is as close as they're thinking it's going to be, we probably won't even see an answer tomorrow. Right. And this is why I'm glad Orsi said Wednesday. Right. We're probably we probably won't see an answer on Tuesday. We may not see an answer on Wednesday. We may not see an answer to the end of the week. So this may be something that just carries on, carries on, carries on until we actually get a, a final on the vote. And then if there's protests, which I'm sure there will be, they're already laying the groundwork for that. We may not know until the end of the week. We may not know until next week. So we may see crazy, dumb, dull markets until then. So I would certainly say you can trade today, Monday. I would certainly say you can trade tomorrow, Tuesday. Where I, where I would first put my radar up would be if you're trading Tuesday night during the Asia session. <laughs> no one trades the Asia session. No one trades the Asia session. Sorry for you guys out there in, in Australia, New Zealand. I apologize, but no, no one trades. You don't. You don't even trade the session. Don't. Let's be real. You don't even trade it. Um, I think when, Wednesday is the first day where I, I would be cautious. Um, only if we don't have a result, because now you're dealing with the fact everyone speculating, and a result can come out at at any time. That's when it gets a little bit wonky. Um. If we have a result, you'll see movement on the open. You'll see movement overnight um, and you'll see more of a, a, a natural flow. It's the uncertainty which makes things weird. That's when that's when markets bounce up and down and left and right and do all the weird stuff when people are uncertain. So definitely trade Monday. Definitely trade Tuesday, but not during the Asia session. <laughs> um, Wednesday is where you want to you, you may want to be on guard. I haven't, I haven't looked at um, what uh, what economic news we have coming out this week either i'm a little a little behind in life right now dealing with lots of funerals Ugh, fun times right um but i think we have like a pmi coming out somewhere let me see if i can load up my uh pmi tuesday anything wednesday people oh, not for the dollar oil um thursday what do we have uh bank of england uh, on thursday um is it bank of england yeah i think it's bank of england yeah um 
There we go. Oh, yeah. We have a rate change on Thursday. There we go. I knew something was coming. I forgot who, if it, whose it was. Yeah. So we have a rate change on Thursday as well. So that's going to be another important event. We have a rate change for the Bank of England. Um, expected rate change, excuse me. And then our expected rate change for uh, the FOMC as well. Both are expected, I think, to be 25% cuts. Um, so we have, that, we have that lurking as well. So you got to deal with an election, uncertainty of that, followed by... An interest rate decision directly afterwards which i would say is going to have more impact that's that's more impactful than the presidential election so this whole week may be a wash maybe it's one you just you kind of take a week off take a little react uh, relaxation week and, and kick the feet up and and do something else hope you enjoyed the discussion hope you learned something from it just want to remind you guys before i go we do have that live workshop coming up at the end of november thanksgiving week we did just open up more space thanks to the amount of threatening letters that you guys gave us so make sure you register and reserve your spot now or at least get on that waiting list that way if anyone drops if we do do another opening you'll be the first one let in www.tier1trading.com you can view all the information there it's called trading unmasked and i look forward to seeing you guys there take care